In this unit, we'll look at two properties of estimators, the bias and the mean square error. First of all, we need to look at the difference between an estimate and an estimator. An estimate is a single value. For example, we might have estimated the value of mu to be 5. Or more generally, suppose we got this from a sample mean, in which case we'd write little x bar as it's a particular value. Whereas the estimator is the distribution of the estimates. So going back to our x bar, we would use a capital X to stand for its distribution. Now in a beautiful world, we would also use a capital mu. However, due to a quirk in the history of mathematics, we still use a lowercase mu. Here we're going to look at the properties of the estimators, in particular, the mean and variance of the distribution of these estimates compared to the true value. First up, let's look at the bias. The bias is the difference between the average value of the estimator and the true value of the parameter. So if we were estimating the parameter theta with an estimator which we'll call theta hat, then the bias of theta hat is the expectation of the estimator take away the true value. If the bias is zero, then we say the estimator is unbiased. That is, on average, it gives the true value of the parameter. Well, let's carry out a little example. Here we're going to determine the bias of an estimator mu hat equal to x bar of the parameter mu from a Poisson mu distribution. So using the formula, the bias of mu hat will be equal to the expectation of the estimator, take away the true value. But the estimator is equal to x bar. So we could write this as follows. Well, how do we find the average value of x bar? Well, let's substitute in the formula. Recall that x bar is equal to 1 over n of the sum of x's. Now, since 1 over n is a constant, we can take that outside the expectation. And since the expectation of a sum of random variables is equal to the sum of expectations, we could write this as follows. Now we're sampling from a Poisson mu, and so that means that each xi comes from a Poisson mu. And so the expectation of an xi, the average value it takes, will be the mean of the Poisson mu, which is mu. Substituting this into our formula gives 1 over n of the sum of mu's take away mu. Since mu doesn't depend on i, when we sum them up, we'll have n mu's. And so we see we have mu minus mu, which is zero, which means the estimator x bar is unbiased. On average, the value of the sample mean will give the true mean of the distribution. Let's take a look at a different example. Here we're asked to determine the bias of the estimator p hat equal to x over n of the parameter p from a binomial np distribution. OK, so using the formula, the bias of p hat will equal the expectation of p hat, take away p. Substituting in our formula, we have the following. And we can see that n is a constant, and so we can take it outside the expectation. Now, since we're sampling from a binomial distribution, this means that the x has a binomial np distribution, and so e of x will be the mean of a binomial np, which is just np. Now, substituting this into our formula gives us 1 over n times np take away p, which is p take away p, which is 0. So we can see that this estimator is unbiased for p. On average, it will give us the true value of p. Not all estimators are unbiased. For example, you might recall in a previous unit, we obtained an estimate for sigma squared from a normal distribution. And actually, that will turn out to be negatively biased. On average, it will estimate sigma squared to be slightly smaller than the true value. The second of our two properties that we'll look at is something called the mean square error. And this is unsurprisingly the mean or the average of the square of the error. Now, what is the error? The error is the difference between the true value theta and our estimated value theta hat. So here in our formula, we see the error and then we've squared it and we're finding the average value of it. Now, an alternative equivalent expression for this is the variance of the estimator plus the bias of the estimator squared. And so this formula gives us a measure of the spread of the results around the true value. An estimator with a smaller mean square error is said to be more efficient. 
as if it has a smaller spread around the true value, then smaller samples will give us fairly accurate results. And if the mean square error of the estimator tends towards zero for large sample size, then it's said to be consistent. And this is consistent with our understanding that a larger sample will give us a more accurate result, i.e. a result with a smaller spread around the true value of the parameter. Well, let's take a look at example. Here we're going to determine the mean square error of our estimator x bar of the parameter mu from a Poisson mu. So using our formula, the mean square error of mu hat is equal to the variance of mu hat plus the bias of mu hat squared. Now recall earlier that we showed that the bias of mu hat was zero. So it's just going to equal the variance of mu hat. Well, mu hat's equal to x bar, so let's shove that in our formula. And then x bar is equal to 1 over n sum of xi. 1 over n is a constant, so we can take it outside the variance, but recall that we'll square it. And assuming that we have a random sample, i.e. the xi's are independent, then we can take the summation outside of a variance. Now, since the xi's come from a Poisson distribution, this means that the variance of xi is equal to the variance of a Poisson, which is mu. Substituting this into our formula gives us 1 over n squared sum of mu, and since mu doesn't depend on i, when we sum them up, we'll have n mu's. And so we'll see that our mean square error is equal to mu over n. For larger values of n, our mean square error will be more efficient. It will have a smaller mean square error. And we can see that as n gets larger and larger, the mean square error head towards zero. And so this is a consistent estimator. It becomes more accurate as the sample size increases. Well, let's look at one final example where we'll find the mean square error of the estimator p hat equal to x over n from a binomial NP distribution. So we'll have the mean square error of p hat is equal to the variance of p hat plus the bias of p hat all squared. Now, earlier we showed that the bias of p hat was also zero, and so it will just be the variance of p hat, which is equal to x over n. Now, n is a constant, so we can take it outside the variance, but recall that we square it. Now, since we're sampling from a binomial distribution, x has a binomial NP distribution, and so the variance of x will just be the variance of a binomial, which is NPQ. Substituting this into our formula gives us 1 over n squared times NPQ, which is PQ over n. Again, we can see as n is larger, the estimator becomes more efficient, and because it heads towards zero, it is again a consistent estimator. Here's a summary of what we covered in this unit.